This week, we're going to finish talking about geometry. We're going to talk about lines, planes, and projections. First, lines. We're interested in lines in three-dimensional space. To describe a line, we need a point on the line, which we're going to call P0. But of course, there's many lines passing through the point P0. To describe one particular line, we use a vector which tells us the direction of the line which passes through P0. This vector we're going to call V. Here's a better picture. We have a blue line passing through the point P0, and the direction is given by the orange vector V. Every point P on the line, we can describe using an equation. In the previous picture, if we let R0 be the vector from the origin to P0 and R be the vector from the origin to P, then the vector equation for the line passing through the point P0 parallel to the line V is R is equal to R0 plus TV. From T, any number between minus infinity and infinity. Equivalently, we could say that the coordinates of the point P must satisfy x, y, z is x0, y0, z0, plus t, b1, b2, b3, for some number t. Or we could break this into three different equations. The x equation, x is equal to x0 plus t, b1. A y equation, y is equal to y0 plus t, b2. And a z equation, z is equal to z0 plus t, b3. These are called the parametric equations for the line L, which passes through the point P0 and is parallel to the vector V. For example, find parametric equations for the line passing through the point minus 2, 0, 4, parallel to the vector 2i, plus 4j minus 2k. For the x equation, we need the first numbers. We want the minus 2 and the 2. Our first equation is x is minus 2 plus 2t. Then we do the same for the y equation. But for y, we take the second numbers. We want the 0 and we want the 4. We get 0 plus 4t. And finally, we need to do the z equation. We take the 4. First number in the z equation is 4. And we take the minus 2 to give us minus 2t. That's all we need to do. We just read the numbers off. Here's a picture of this line. x is minus 2 plus 2t. y is 4t. And z is 4 minus 2t. When t is equal to 0, we get the point p0 that we started with. x is minus 2 y is 0 and z is 4. For different values of t, we get different points along the line. For example, if t is 1, we can calculate if t is 1, we have minus 2 plus 2, or 0, y is 4, and z is 4 minus 2, or 2. So this must be the point 0, 4, 2. And so on. t is a half, we get here. t is 3 over 2, t is 2, etc. moving along the line. Using negative numbers, we can move along the line in the other direction. t is minus a half, would give us a point roughly here. t 
So is minus one would be roughly here and so on. Another example, find parametric equations for the line passing through minus three to minus three and one minus one four. This time we have a line and we're told two points on the line. We're told a point P and we're told a point Q. But that's not what we need. What we need is one point on the line and a vector. We could choose either of the points we're given. I'm choosing to use P. So for the point P0, as I'm going to say, is the same as P. If we wanted to use Q, that would also be correct. For the vector, we need a vector which is parallel to the line. I'm going to take the vector from P to Q. The vector from P to Q is 4 minus 3, 7, or 4i minus 3j plus 7k. And then we're ready to write down the parametric equations. Take the first numbers, minus 3 and 4, to get x is minus 3 plus 4t. The second numbers, 2 and minus 3, gives us y is 2 minus 3t. And the third numbers, minus 3 and 7, gives us the third equation, z is minus 3 plus 70. Now previously we had a line where t could be any number between minus infinity and infinity. Let's suppose instead of an infinite line, we want a finite line. Let's suppose we want some line which stops at each end. It stops when t is equal to a and it stops when t is equal to e. This is called a line segment. For example, parameterize, that's another way of saying find the parametric equations, the line segment joining minus 3 to minus 3 and 1 minus 1 4. This is the same two points that we used in the previous example. So we already know x, y, and z equations. We just need to find the points a and b where the line stops. First one is easy because we chose p0 to be equal to p. We get this point when t is equal to 0. Moreover, because the vector we chose was the vector from p to q, we get to the point Q when T is equal to 1. So the answer to this question is these same three equations, but now we're specified that T must be between 0 and 1. Here is a picture of this line segment. We can calculate the distance from a point to a line. And I mean the shortest distance from a point S to a line L, which in this picture is denoted by D. D be the shortest distance from a point S to a line L. Then from the picture on the previous slide, which I will go back to, we can see that D must be the norm of the vector from P to S sine theta. But you will remember the formula for cross product from last week. The cross product of the vector PS and V is norm of PS, norm of V, sine theta, and then a, 
a unit vector n. And remember, because n is a unit vector, the norm of n is equal to 1. So we don't, we don't need to worry about this. Combining these two together, we have our formula for the distance. The distance from a point to the line is the norm of PS cross V divided by the norm of V. If this was a classroom exam, I would give you this formula on your formula sheet. For an online exam, I recommend that you have this equation written down on a piece of paper next to you. For example, find the distance from the point 115 to the line x is 1 plus t, y is 3 minus t, z is equal to 2t. I'm going to go back to the previous slide. What do we need? We need a point on the line called p so that we can calculate the vector from p to s. And we need a vector v which is parallel to the line. After we find these two things, we can calculate the distance using this formula. So looking at these equations, how can we find a point on the line? The answer is we take the first numbers. One and three comes from the first two equations. The Z equation is really zero plus two T. So we're going to take the number zero. Straight away, we can write down that the point one three zero is on the line. We also need a vector which is parallel to the line. We take the numbers on the T. We have one, and then minus one, and then two. So the vector i minus j plus 2k must be parallel to the line. After we've picked out this information, we can start doing our calculations. We need the vector from p to s. This is the vector 0 minus 2, 5, or minus 2j plus 5k. We need to calculate PS cross V. I'll leave this calculation for you to check. Please check that PS cross V is I plus 5j plus 2k. And then I'm ready to calculate the distance. It's the norm of PS cross V divided by the norm of V. And again, please check this. Check that the answer is square root of 5. We should talk about intersecting lines. Two points, two lines intersect at a point V if and only if P, line, P lies on both of the lines. So, for example, here are two lines, equations of two lines, and the question is, do these two lines intersect? If the answer is yes, where do they, do they intersect? Because we have two different lines, we need two different variables for the lines. I'm going to use T for the first line, and because I've already used T, I need a different letter for the second one. So I'm choosing to use S for the second line. These two lines intersect if and only if we can find a point which is on both of the lines. In other words, if we can find numbers S and T where the X coordinates and the Y coordinates and the Z coordinates are the same. For the X coordinates, we want to find S and T such that seven minus T is the same as minus 1 plus 2s. For 
the s for the y coordinates, we need to find s and t such that 3 plus 3t is equal to 3s, and the first equation is true as well. And we need to find s and t such that 2t plus 1 plus s is also true. The question is, can we find s and t such that all three of these equations are true? Rearranging the first equation tells us that t must be 8 minus 2s, and the second equation tells us that s must be t plus 1. If we put the first equation into the second equation, we find that s is t plus 1, or 8 minus 2s plus 1, or 9 minus 2s, which then, if we solve this, tells us that s must be 3. If we know s is 3, then t is equal to 2. If we choose s is 3 and t is equal to 2, then the first two equations are true. Then the question is, is the third equation also true? If the answer is yes, then it means that the two lines intersect. If the answer is no, then the two lines do not intersect. So we need to check the third equation. We take s is 3 and t is equal to 2, put them in, and we find that yes, the equation is true. Because, the, because all three equations are true, true for s is 3 and t is 2, then the two lines must intersect, and we can calculate the point where they intersect, because now we know s and t, they must intersect at 5, 9, 4. Another example, same question, but two different lines. Do these two lines intersect? And if the answer is yes, where? We write down our three equations. Is it possible to find S and T so that all three of these equations are true? Start with the second equation first of all. The second equation tells us that S must be the same as T. Okay, if we put s equal to t in the first equation, then we find that we want t equal to 2. However, if we put s equal to t into the third equation, the third equation says we want to have t equal to minus 2. This is not possible. It's not possible to find an s and a t so that all three lines, all three equations are true. So the answer to this problem is the two lines do not intersect. We can imagine a picture of the lines looking something like this. They will cross over somehow, but one line will be somehow higher up than the other line. It will not pass through the same point. The distance between two lines. There's three cases that we need to talk about. The first case, perhaps we have intersecting lines. This is easy. The distance between two intersecting lines is zero because they intersect, they touch. We might have parallel lines. How do we know they're parallel? We know they're parallel because v1 will be equal to a constant multiplied by v2. Or perhaps we have skew lines, lines which do not intersect and which are not parallel. We can imagine the picture looking something like this. How do we know if two lines are skew? Because vector v1 is not equal to a constant multiplied by vector v2. As I said, intersecting lines is the easiest one. 
the distance between the two intersecting lines is zero. Let's move on to a more interesting case. Suppose we have parallel lines. As I said before, parallel lines means vector v1 is equal to a constant multiplied by vector v2. There's another way to think about this. We have parallel lines if v1 cross v2 is zero, because parallel vectors always have a zero cross product. The distance between two parallel lines, as you can perhaps as you should be able to see from this picture, is the same as the distance from point P2 to line V to line L1. We already know that the formula for the distance from a point to a line, so we can just write it down, changing the variable names. The distance between two parallel lines is the norm of P1, P2 cross V1 divided by V2. And of course, we could replace V1 by V2 if we wanted to. This is a formula which you will want to have written down and ready for an exam. Skew lines. Skew lines are lines where the lines do not intersect and the cross product between V1 and V2 is not zero. Drawn a pair of skew lines in this picture. We're interested in the, dis the sh shortest possible distance between these two lines. So the shortest possible distance we're going to have a 90 degree angle between the line L1 and the dotted line between the two, and a 90 degree angle between line L2 and this dotted line. How can we find a vector which is orthogonal to both line one and line two? We can use the cross product. The vector V1 cross V2 is orthogonal to both V1 and V2. So vector n is going to be pointing in this in the same direction as this dotted line. Distance between these two lines is the same as the distance between Q1 and Q2. But we don't know Q1 and we don't know Q2. But we do know that the norm of this vector is the norm. We do know that this vector is the projection of P1, P2 onto the vector n. And we have a formula for the projection of a vector onto a vector. So we know that the distance between two skew lines is the absolute value of P1, P2 dot product with V1 cross V2 divided by the norm of V1 cross V2. Yes. I hope you followed that, but if not, just remember this is the formula that we want for skew lines. Again, make sure you have this formula written down before you go into an exam. So to recap, intersecting lines, the distance is zero. For parallel lines, this is our formula. For skew lines, we use this formula. For example, find the distance between the following two lines. First, we need to read off the information that we need. Let's do line one first of all. 
we need a point on this line and we need a vector which is parallel to this line. For the point, we use the first numbers, which in this case are 0, 0, 0. For the vector, we use the numbers next to t. So 0, t, minus t, and t. For 0, i, minus j, plus k. Then we need to do the same for line 2. We need a point on line 2, and we need a vector which is parallel to line 2. We can read off the point, it must be 1, 0, 0, because x is 1 plus something, y is 0 plus something, and z is 0 plus something. And we can read off the vector, 2i plus 1j minus 3k. First thing to do is to calculate V1 cross V2 to see if these two lines are parallel. Because V1 cross V2 is not zero, these two vectors are not parallel. Um, I've skipped a step here. A step the next step would be to check if these two lines intersect, I can tell you that these two lines do not intersect. Because they do not intersect, and because they are not parallel, they must be skewed. We need the vector from P1 to P2, which in this case is just I. And then we use our formula for the distance between two skew lines. And I'm going to skip this calculation because I'm leaving this for you to check at a later time. Our second chapter for today is about planes. To describe a plane, we need a point through which the plane passes, and we need a vector. And in this case, we need a vector which is perpendicular to the plane. Or to say it another way, we need a vector which is normal to the plane. Let P0 be some point in the plane, and let N be our vector which is orthogonal to, or perpendicular to, or normal to the plane. And let X, Y, Z be any other point in the plane. Now we can imagine a vector from P0 to P, and we have our vector N. Because N is orthogonal to the plane, this ang the angle between these two vectors must be 90 degrees. Or to say it another way, their dot product must be equal to zero. And this is the equation that we use as the vector equation for a plane. If we write this in terms of, of coordinates, n dot p zero p is equal to zero is the same as a x minus x zero plus b y minus y zero plus c z minus z zero is equal to zero. If we take the x zero, the y zero, and the z zero all over to the right hand side, and I can rename it as d, we get the standard equation for a plane. Ax plus by plus cz equal to d. For some numbers, a, b, c, and d. For example, find an equation for the plane passing through minus 3, 0, 7, normal to 5, 2, minus 1. We start with this, with this form. A x minus x0 plus b y minus y0 plus c z minus x0 is equal to 0. And we fill in the numbers. A must be 5, b is 2, and c must be minus 1. 
x0 must be minus 3, y0 must be 0, and z0 must be 7. Fill these in and then rearrange, and you get the answer to this problem. 5x plus 2y minus z is equal to minus 22. Let me remark that the vector ABC plus AI plus BJ plus CK is normal to the plane AX plus BY plus CZ equal D. Anytime we see an equation for the plane, we can just look at the numbers ABC and straight away we know our normal vector. For example, find a vector which is normal to X plus 2Y plus 3Z equal to 4. We just look at the numbers 1, 2, and 3. The answer is 1i plus 2j plus 3k, which we can write down straight away. For example, find an equation for the plane containing the points 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, and 0, 3, 0. We need a point on the plane. We've got three of them. We can choose any one of these that we want. And we need a vector which is orthogonal to the plane, or perpendicular to the plane, or normal to the plane. For the normal vector, we're going to say EF cross EG, because this vector is orthogonal to EF, and it's orthogonal to EG. So we're going to take N is equal to EF cross EG. I'll leave it for you to calculate that this is 3I plus 2J plus 6K. We need a point on the plane. We could choose any one of the three points in the question. I'm going to choose 0, 0, 1, but it doesn't matter which one we choose. Put these numbers into the equation. 3x minus 0 plus 2y minus 0 plus 6z minus 1 equal to 0, and then rearrange to get the answer. The answer to this problem is 3x plus 2y plus 6z is equal to 6. Lines of intersection. Two possibilities if we have two planes. Either the two planes are parallel, that means normal vector n1 is equal to some constant multiplied by n2, or to say it a different way, n1 cross n2 is equal to the zero vector, or the two planes intersect in a line. For example, find a vector parallel to, this should say to, the line of intersection of the planes 3x minus 6y plus 2z equal to 15 and 2x plus y minus 2z equal to 5. We need the two normal vectors, so this is easy. Straight away we pick out the numbers. 3 minus 6 minus 2 from the first plane, and 2, 1 minus 2 from the second plane. And then we find a vector which is parallel to the intersection by taking the cross product of these two vectors. We're trying to ve find a vector which is orthogonal to n1 and orthogonal to n2. Any time we want to find a vector which is orthogonal to two other vectors, we can just take that cross product. I will leave this calculation for you to check. Please check that we get 14i plus 2j plus 15k. <coughs> Next example. Find the point 
where this line intersects this plane. We draw a quick picture. We have some plane, looks like this, and we have some line, which is intersecting the plane at some point. And try again. And we're asked to find the coordinates of this point where the line intersects the plane. We start with the equation for our plane, 3x plus 2y plus 6x equal to 6. But we already know an equation for x. We know that x must be 8 over 3 plus 2t. So we replace x by this. And then we do the same for y and for z. And we simplify and we end up with t equal to minus 1. The line intersects the plane when t is equal to minus 1. All that remains is to calculate the point on the line when t is equal to minus 1. And here's the calculation at the bottom of the slide. The point where on this line when t is equal to minus 1 is the point 2 over 3, 2, 0. Now, before we go on, let's do a quick check. Let's just check we haven't made a mistake here. We've calculated this point on the line, but is this point really on the plane? Let's double check this. We have 3x plus 2y plus 6z, and we want this to be e plus 6. Let's just check this. 3 multiplied by 2 over 3 plus 2 multiplied by 2 plus 6 multiplied by 0 is 2 plus 4 plus 0 or 6. So the answer is yes. This point really is on the plane as well as on the line. A very quick check like this is worth doing just to make sure that we haven't done a mistake. The distance from a point to a plane. Suppose we have some point S in space and we have a plane. We're interested in the distance from the point to the plane. I'm interested in the length of this dotted line where this angle is 90 degrees. We can see from these pictures that this distance d is the same as the norm of the projection of ps onto n. We already have a formula for the projection of a vector onto a vector from last time. So we can write down a formula for the distance from a point to a plane. And here's another one of these formulas which you will want to have written down before an exam. This distance is the absolute value of ps dot n divided by the norm of n. Let's do an example. Find the distance from the point 1, 2, 3 to the plane x plus 2y plus 3z is equal to 4. We have our point s. We need a point in the plane and we need a vector which is normal to the plane. First, a point in the plane. We can take any numbers x, y, and z which satisfy this equation. And of course there's infinitely many choices for us. 
we can make life easier for ourselves if we insist that y should be zero and z should be zero. Then 2y is just zero, 3z is just zero, and our equation simplifies to having x equal to four. So we could choose the point four, zero, zero. This is a point in the plane. We don't have to choose this point, we could choose one of many other points. For example, let's suppose we chose that x and z should be zero. There we have no x and no z in the equation. We would end up with 2y equal to 4, or y equal to 2. If we wanted to, we could choose the point 0, 2, 0. We need a vector n, which is normal to the plane. This is easy. We just read off the numbers 1, 2, 3. n must be i plus 2j plus 3k. We have the necessary information. Then all we need to do is to put the numbers into the equation and calculate it. Again, I'm going to skip the calculation now. I leave this for you to check again later. If you're re-watching this video, pause it now, check for this calculation, or open up the lecture notes, read through the calculation there, and check that you're happy with it, check that the calculation is correct. We can talk about the angles between the two planes. You can see from this picture that there are two angles between these two planes. There's the angle theta, which in this picture is the same as the angle between n1 and n2. Or we could look at the angle 180 degrees minus theta. We're interested in whichever one of these angles is the smaller number. <coughs> we want to num an angle which is always between 0 and 90 degrees. So we either want the angle between n1 and n2, or 180 degrees minus the angle to the N1 and N2. For example, find the angle between these two planes. The idea is we're going to write down the two normal vectors. We're going to calculate the angle between these two vectors, which we talked about how to do last week. If this angle is between 0 and 90, then we're finished. If the angle is between 90 and 180, then we're going to do 180 minus our angle. We can write down the two normal vectors straight away. 3i minus 6j minus 2k and minus 2i minus j plus 2k. Using the formula from last week, the angle between these two vectors is approximately 101 degrees. We don't want an angle which is bigger than 90 degrees. We want an angle which is between 0 and 90. So we're going to do 180 minus 101 to get the answer. The angle between these two planes is approximately 79 degrees. Our final chapter for today is about projections. Last week we talked about projecting a vector onto a vector. We're going to elaborate and extend this idea this week. Last week we defined that the projection of a vector u onto a vector v was given by this formula. We're going to be using this formula quite a bit today. First of all, the projection of a vector onto a line. Suppose we have some line L, looking at the picture at the bottom, and a red vector, vector from P to S. We can imagine that we come along with some heavy weight,
We put this on top of the vector and it squashes the vector down. The red vector is squashed down onto the green vector. Or we can imagine this in another way. We can imagine that we're looking at the shadow of the red vector onto the line. The sun is up at the bottom, at the top left corner. The shadow of the red vector is the green vector. The definition is the projection of a vector u onto a vector l is the same as the projection of the vector u onto the vector v. We know how to project a vector u onto a vector v, so we're just going to be doing the same thing. For example, find the projection of the vector u equal to 2i minus j plus 3k onto the line x is 1 plus 2t, y is equal to 2 minus t, z is equal to 4 minus 4t. We need a vector which is parallel to the line. That's easy. 2i minus j minus 4k. And then we use our formula. The projection of u onto L, which is the same as the projection of u onto V. Here's our formula, u dot V divided by the norm of V squared multiplied by V. And I'm going to leave this calculation for you to check when you read, go through this another time. Check that I haven't made a mistake. Please check that the answer is minus 2 over 3i plus 1 over 3j plus 4 over 3k. We can project a vector onto a plane. The projection of a vector u onto a plane with a normal vector n is the same as the u minus the projection of u onto n. Let me show you the picture. Picture looks something like this. Yeah, we start with the vector u and we start with a blue plane. We want to squash u onto the plane, or to say it another way, we want to imagine there is a sun up at the top, and we're looking for the shadow of the red vector on the plane. We try to calculate the green vector. What we can do is we can calculate this orange vector, because this orange vector is the same as the projection of u onto n. If we know the red vector and we know the orange vector, then we can calculate the green vector, because in this picture, you can see that green plus orange is equal to red. Or to say this another way, the green vector is equal to the red vector minus the orange vector. So the green vector, the one we want, is the red vector minus the orange vector. Or u minus u dot n divided by the norm of x squared multiplied by n. If you wish, just remember this formula. For example, find the projection, projection of this vector u onto this plane. Normal vector, straight away we know this, we can write this down. We had know our formula for the projection of u onto n. I'll leave this for you to check. Please check this is 3 over 2i minus a half j plus k. Key step for us is the projection of u onto the plane is equal to u minus the projection of u onto n, which we, which we can calculate. 
the answer to this problem is minus a half i plus five over two j plus two k. All of these problems, it's about finding the correct formula, finding the information that we need from the question, and then putting the, putting the numbers into the formula and calculating the answer. The projection of a point on a plane. I suppose we start with a point P, and we want to project this point onto the plane. We're either squashing P onto the plane, or we're looking for the shadow of P on the plane. If we know a point Q on the plane, then we can write down the vector from P to Q. And then we can calculate this own vector, which is the projection of PQ onto M. If we know the point P and we know the own vector, we can add these together to get the projection of P onto the plane. The formula is the projection of P onto the plane is P plus this orange vector the projection of PQ onto M. So what do we need if we're going to do a question like this? We're going to need a vector N, which is normal to the plane, and we're going to need a vector Q in the plane. Find the projection of the point 1, 2, minus 4 onto the plane 2x plus y plus 4z equal to 2. We need a vector which is normal to the plane straight away. We can write that down, 2i plus j plus 4k. And we need a point on the plane. We have an x, a y, and a z. Choose two of these to be zero. It doesn't matter which two you choose. I'm going to choose y is zero, and I'm going to choose z is zero. And then I'm left with 2x is equal to 2, or x equal to 1. One of the points that we could choose in the plane is the point 1, 0, 0. But of course, there's many other points you could choose, and they would all give the same final answer. Now that we've got the information, it's just a case of taking the correct formula and putting the information in. The correct formula is P plus the projection of PQ onto M. So we need PQ. You can check it's minus 2J plus 4K. And we need the projection of PQ onto M, which you can check is 403I plus 203J plus 803K. Then we're almost finished. All that's left to do is to put the information into our formula. We want P plus the projection of PQ onto M, which in this case is 7 over 3, 8 over 3, minus 4 over 3. Now, we should do a double check here. It's easy to make a mistake when we do these calculations, but there's a quick check we can do just to see if our answer is correct or not. Is this point really in the plane? If the answer is yes, then we've probably not made a mistake. What we're going to do is we're going to start with 2x plus, 4 plus y plus 4z, and I want to get 2. Put the numbers 7 over 3, 8 over 3, and minus 4 over 3 in, and we calculate 6 over 3 or 2. Yes, this point satisfies the equation for the plane. The point really is in the plane. So we've probably not made a mistake in the calculation. A quick check like this, a quick one minute check, a quick 30 minute check is worth doing in an exam just to see if you've made a mistake somewhere.
our next or our final idea, which will take the rest of today's class, the rest of the slides, is the idea of projecting a line onto a plane. Let's suppose we have some line L and we have a plane. Can we project the line onto the plane? Can we squash the line onto the plane? Or can we take the shadow of the line on the plane? There's three cases that we're going to need to talk about. First case is the, the case where the line is orthogonal to the plane. Suppose the plane looks like this. Let's suppose the line goes through the plane. And let's suppose that the angle between the line and the plane is 90 degrees. That's the first case. Perhaps the line is parallel to the plane. Then the line doesn't intersect the plane, but it just hovers above it somehow. And we're going to be trying to project this line onto the plane. The third case that we're going to talk about is the case where the line is not parallel to the plane and is not orthogonal to the plane. We should imagine that the picture in the third case looks something like this. The line passes through the plane and the angle between the line and the plane is not 90 degrees. How do we know if a line is orthogonal to the plane? Because the cross product between V and N will be the zero vector. How do we know if the line is parallel to the plane? The line is parallel to the plane when V dot N is the number zero. And case three, when is the line not parallel to the plane and not orthogonal to the plane? When these two, ter two terms are not zero. V dot N is not the number zero, V cross N is not the zero vector. First of all, let's suppose we have a line which is orthogonal to the plane. We're going to suppose that V cross N is the zero vector. This is the easiest case. Suppose we have the sun straight up here. And we're looking for the shadow of the line. The shadow of the line would just be this black point. The projection of this line L onto the plane would just be the same as the projection of any point P on the line onto the plane. And we know how to project a point onto a plane already. Case two. Let's suppose we have a line which is parallel to the plane. We're going to suppose that V dot N is the number zero. Then again, let's suppose we have the sun up here, and we're looking for the shadow of the red line on the plane. We're looking to find this black line. The black line, of course, is parallel to the red line, so we're going to have the same vector v. The black line is going to pass through the point I'm pointing to, and it's going to be parallel to the vector v. The projection of the line L onto the plane will be the line passing through the point projection of P onto the plane in the direction of v. Case three, I suppose we have a line which is neither parallel to nor orthogonal to the plane. Our line intersects the plane at the point B. We know how to calculate this. We've done an intersection of a line on a plane already. And it will pass through this point, the projection of P onto the plane which we know how to do. We know how to project a point on the plane. 
Since we know two points on the black line, we can calculate parametric equations for the black line. We're interested in the line which passes through the points B and the projection of P onto the plane. The rest of today's lesson will be doing the examples of projecting a line onto a plane. For example, find a projection of this line onto this plane. Step one, find V and N. You know how to do this, so let's just skip ahead to step two. Step two says, does the line intersect the plane? Now if we think back to the three cases, if the line was parallel to the plane, the, the line did not intersect the plane. If the line was not parallel to the plane, then it must intersect the plane somewhere. So really we're asking, is the line parallel to the plane? To answer this question, we calculate V dot N. And we find that the answer is not zero. So the answer is yes. The line does intersect the plane. So either we're in case one, we have the orthogonal line, or we're in case three, with a line which is not parallel to nor orthogonal to the plane. Step three, we want to find the point where the line intersects the plane. We've done an example of this before, so I'm just going to skip ahead. When you have time to go back through this, you can check this calculation. You can check that the line intersects the plane at this point, which I'm calling B. E. Step four. Is the line orthogonal to the plane? To answer this, we calculate V cross N. If the answer if this is equal to zero, then the line is orthogonal to the plane. If it is not zero, then the line is not orthogonal to the plane. You can check that V cross N is in fact the zero vector. So the answer is yes. Our line is orthogonal to our plane. We have a plane, we have a line which passes through it. This angle is 90 degrees. And this point where the line intersects the plane, we've found it already and we've called this the point B. And this is all we want. The projection of the line onto the plane is just the point B. So the answer to this question is, the projection of our line onto our plane is the point 9.435.2. Another example. Find the projection of this line onto this plane. As before, step one, write down V and N, and then answer the question, does the line intersect the plane? We calculate V dot N, and we find the answer is zero. This tells us that the line does not intersect the plane. Instead, the line is parallel to the plane. So now we know that we're in case two. I'm going to go back to case two. Here we go. We have a picture, something like this, 
we want to calculate the projection of P onto the plane and then find the line which is passing through this point in the same direction as V. How do we project the point P onto the plane? Take our point P, we take any point on the line, on the plane, so, and then we project the vector PQ onto M, and then we do the projection of the point P onto the plane is the projection of is P plus the projection of PQ onto M just as we've done before. The projection of P onto the plane is 5 over 2, 4 minus a half. Um, being deliberately quick at this point because this is the same ideas that we've talked about earlier. A quick check, a quick double check to see if there's no mistakes. Is this point really on the plane? Put the numbers 5 over 2, 4 minus a half into the equation for the plane and check that we get 27 and uh, yes so yes this point really is on the plane and then the final step find the projection of the line onto the plane we're interested in the line which passes through this point we've just calculated the line which passes through the point 5 over 2 5 over 2 4 minus a half in the same direction as 4i plus 4j plus 4k. We can, as soon as we know this, we can straight away write down the answer. x is 5 over 2 plus 4t, y is 4 plus 4t, and z is minus half plus 4t. Final example. I've done an example of case one and an example of case two. You've probably guessed already that this is an example of case three. Let's check this. Find the projection of this line onto this plane. We need V and M, and we need to answer the question, does the line intersect the plane? Because V dot M is not zero, the line does not intersect. The so line does intersect the plane. So straight away we know we're not in case two. The line is not parallel to the plane. Find the point of intersection. We've done this before, so I'm going to skip through. I leave this for you to check. Check that the point where the line intersects the plane is 0, 3, 6. I'm going to skip ahead to the next slide now. Is the line orthogonal to the plane? To answer this question, we need V cross N. Is this zero or not? And for this example, V cross N is not the zero vector, so the line is not orthogonal to the plane. Okay, so now we know that our picture looks something like this. Our line is not parallel to the plane and it's not orthogonal to the plane. We need two points. The point B, where the line intersects the plane, and we're going to project another point down onto the plane. And then we're going to be looking at the line which passes through these two points. We already have B. We need to find another point on the projection of line onto the plane. We start with a point P on the original line and we project this down onto the plane. This calculation is the calculation of projecting a point onto a plane. We've done one of these earlier, the idea is the same. I leave this for you to double check. You can check that 
So the trajectory of this point onto the plane is 2 minus root 1. And then to finish this example, find the projection of the line onto the projection of the plane. We're looking through for the point which passes through these two points that we're trying to find. We need a vector which goes from B to the projection of P onto the plane. You can check that we want the vector 2i minus 6j minus 5k. So we want the line which passes through 0, 3, 6 in the same direction as 2i minus 6j minus 5k. And that's all the information we need to write down the answer. The answer to this question is x is equal to 2t, y is equal to 3 minus 6t, and z is equal to 6 minus 5t. And finally, that is the end of our three weeks about geometry. Next week, we're going to start talking about a different type of mathematics. We're going to talk about combinatorics, which is a fancy way of saying counting. And then we're going to start talking about probability. Do you have any questions?